I would say one word, service. Yeah. Be in the office to serve your patients and not be in self-service. Ask yourself the question, how can I be of help to this person? Not what's in it for me. Yeah. As soon as you go to what's in it for me, it's ego. But when you come from the, the consciousness of soul, it's how can I be a, a blessing in this situation? Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Oberstein, Life Chiropractic College West President, coming at you from Hayward, California, for another edition of our Life West mm -hmm. Leadership Line. Today, we've got a long-standing chiropractor, upstanding chiropractor in our profession, uh, uh, a beautiful man, beautiful soul, who's really embraced chiropractic and lived the chiropractic lifestyle for many, many years. Uh, we have Dr. Ken Harris. Ken, welcome to, to the Life West Leadership Line. Well, Ron, I'm honored and, and, and overjoyed to be here with have this conversation with you. Perfect. Well, listen, I want to tell my audience a little bit about you, our audience. Uh, Dr. Ken graduated in 1974 from Columbia Institute of Chiropractic. That was back in Manhattan, right? And, uh, and that's where he went to school, um, practiced 45 years. Yeah, consecutively in New Jersey, Waldwick, New Jersey. Um, he'll, we'll talk about that name in a second. He's just been lecturing on chiropractic, been doing amazing things. Uh, three years ago, he wrote a best-selling book called Synchronicity. It's uh, the magic, the mystery, the meaning, and uh, we'll have that on the bottom. So we'll, we'll want everyone to you know go and reach a copy of that. Uh, but more than anything, he's been an inspiration in chiropractic. He's he's a wise old soul who's uh, mentored a lot of chiropractors in a lot of different areas. And and we're just honored to have him on the show today. So, Ken, once again, I want to welcome you. And it's great to have you with us. I'm happy and overjoyed to be here, Ron. Anything I can impart to this audience that will change the trajectory of someone's life. I, I'm I'm just honored to do it. I love it. I love it. And I think the thing that I didn't talk about was probably the crowning glory of everything, right? Um, how many years you've been married? 54 next week if she doesn't break, break the contract. <laughs> if she doesn't kick you out by then. 54 years of marriage. It's just so beautiful. So so congratulations and please congratulate your bride on that. It's so great. And you're like, you know, 77 years young, ready to go. Let's jump into this thing and uh, and start kicking some stuff off. Um, let's talk about something. You know, I know that, you know, you talked about synchronicity and obviously you're in practice for 45 years. You, you got some knowledge under you, you know. Talk about what you feel are the the keys to success, you know, the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, if you could call it that. I would say one word, service. Yeah. Be in the office to serve your patients and not be in self-service. Ask yourself the question, how can I be of help to this person? Not what's in it for me. Yeah. As soon as you go to what's in it for me, it's ego. But when you come from the, the consciousness of soul, it's how can I be a, a blessing in this situation? Yeah. And when you talk about service, you know, I mean, obviously 45 years and 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 when we talk about Waldwick, share the definition of Waldwick. Well, it's two words. It's German and Dutch. Wald is wood and wick is light. So I, I went there not knowing that, but I wanted to be a light in the woods. I love it. To my community. Yep. Yep. And you blaze a path, right? You know, it's 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 just what's there. You know, you talk about service, you talk about chiropractic, and obviously we have the science philosophy and art, you know, and 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 everyone you can't, it's a three-legged stool, right? You know, take one away, the stool's gonna tip over, shorten one, the stool's gonna tip over. There has to be an equalness between between the three, you know. in this in in, in your 45 years in practice, not just your, you know, your your what, your almost 50 years. I think next year is going to be your 50 year anniversary in chiropractic. You know, what have you seen around the, around the three legged stool? What's what share with us, how we could use that or our viewers can take some of that and be able to be able to do something on a successful level in their offices. Well, when the winds of change blow as in the little, the story about the, the house of straw, the house of wood, you know, that fairy tale, uh, you better build your, your practice around a strong philosophical foundation. Uh, I'm not. I'm not negating technique. I'm not. I'm not negating what we do as an art form or the science behind what we do. But if you're not deeply rooted in the philosophy of chiropractic, uh, when when those uh, challenges come, and they will come, 
in everybody's practice, there will be challenges. You won't be able to sustain it. So for me, uh, I was constantly listening to tapes, reading books. The, the, I, you know, I read all the Palmer books. I went every week, uh, every month, I went up to Reggie Gold's house for three years. Because the first day in school, this lady, Irene Gold, <clears throat> she was my <laughs> she was my classmate. She says, you want to learn about chiropractic, Ken? I said, yeah, that's why I'm in I'm chiropractic college. She says, you ain't going to learn it here. You got to come up and meet my husband. And the rest is history. Yeah. And when you talk about some of those mentors, share a few of them with, with us. Well, uh, Reggie was my first one. I heard the chiropractic, the big idea from Reggie. And as, as we said before we went on air, I didn't need a double-blind study to know that this was the truth. I didn't need evidence-based at that time. Today, everything is evidence-based. I, I laugh. I innately knew that what he was talking about, the relationship of universal to innate, was a universal truth. And for me, it, it resonated viscerally. So I, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. Uh, I was so naive when I got out of school. I thought if they were not too dead too long, if I adjust them, they would get back up. <laughs> they come back, man. They come back. I know. I know. Today, I, today I had the honor of speaking to our our student population. We do a Friday seminar, and and um and I usually do the first one as long as I'm here, right? If I'm not if I'm not traveling. And today I brought up the major premise, and I brought it up. We were talking about setting intention, New Year, all that stuff, right? You know, talking about setting intention, visualization. You know, how do we really create this? And that, and then I brought up the major premise, a universal you know intelligence that gives you know property to all matter you know that kind of thing and 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 it was just so everything i talked about today i kept relating back to back to the major premise you know back to principle number one and when you look at our philosophy you know it's like some people in the in the profession will go oh that's all woo woo and it's this and you know it isn't it is it is the foundation for life that's like saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm religious but but the Bible or the Torah, that's all woo-woo stuff, you know, or the, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, it's like these are the principles that were set upon in chiropractic, right? And when you really explore the Palmers and BJ, Dee's writings, you know, um, incredible stuff, right? They were way ahead of their time. They were visionaries. Yeah. yeah. Modern science is now confirming what they, what they purported to know. Yeah, and the big thing people must remember that universal intelligence doesn't abandon you when you come out into the world. It's still with you. You know, it created in nine months' time, it created a whole living being from two germ cells. But it's still with us. And our job as chiropractic is very simple. Keep the head and the heart connected. Keep the coherent field open. Let it flow. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, too. It doesn't abandon us when we when we leave either. You know, the universal intelligence is still there that doesn't die when the body goes right you know it just takes on another form and moves in a different direction i mean if it's quantum physics it's got its energy it's got to keep going right so i mean and when you start talking about this stuff it's like oh my god like all we need to do is just get our hands on people do it but that's where the science comes in right and the art comes in i'll tell you who i love but we, we we spoke about him a bit i'm sure you know him very well you know donnie epstein right who who who's this just you know, just this brilliant guy over here. And technically, I mean, whatever Donnie's doing is just out of this world, but he's done a really beautiful job of bringing that all in together. And when you start looking and talking about the science, philosophy, and art, there's not much left, right? Mm -hmm. It's a triune. It's a triune. I was Donnie's teacher. I, I, I'm very well. I'm very well. Did you teach him? I taught Donnie. Yeah. At New, was he at New York or was he? Yeah, at yeah. And he was a pain in the butt. He would come up after every class with the green books and ask me questions. This is before he woke up. He was he was searching. He was researching. Yeah. And then and then of course uh, you know he developed the network system, which was a compilation of all techniques. Right. But yeah, I know Donnie very well. I spoke at uh, at New Be not New Beginnings. Well, I spoke there too, but I spoke at the the Mile High Conference. Right, right. Well, tell me, tell me, what'd you teach? Uh, I, I taught anatomy and physiology. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's incredible! And what better place than to see universal intelligence, right? I mean, you know, and innate intelligence. I mean, it's just, just beautiful. So, so let's move on because I want to just ask you some questions. Some things have been kind of come up in my head, and and you you were in practice forty five years. I mean, that's beautiful. Every day you got up, you know, you had to be engaged, right? You know, 
Tell us about that. You know, well, how- you had to be prepared. I had a routine. I, you know, I, I'm a meditator. I meditated every morning. I do yoga. I take a walk in the woods or by a lake somewhere uh, to get my myself clear so that when the pe- people come to me, I'll be guided as to where and when and how to adjust them. Mm-hmm. I did I did a lot of innate uh, adjusting. I started out with, I, I'd studied with Clarence Constant originally, and I used to take the full spine x rays and I'd measure them precisely and so on. Then I went out to Mount Horeb and I saw Constant in op- operation. I said, Dr. G, the book says this, but you did that. He says, Well, there's always the exception to the rules, son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was very scientific to begin with, but as I, I became more artful and more inner directed, I, 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 I didn't adjust everybody the same way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I and, wasn't and, one bam, bam, thank, thank you, man, kind of a chiropractor. I wasn't. I, I was sometimes this upper cervical, sometimes it's a thumb and, and Logan basic, sometimes full spine, depending on what was needed in that moment. So right. I, I guess be aware in present time consciousness what the patient needs. Now, for my side of the pancake, that patient was me. When I was adjusting that person, I was adjusting myself yeah. in my head. So that was the focus and intention that I brought to the adjustment. And it wasn't a long, it wasn't 10 minutes. Sometimes it was 30 seconds. I love it. I love it. And like you just said, whatever the patient needs, you know, because that's really what it's about, right? I mean, you said it earlier, you know, that you're serving not for you, but you're serving for the patient. You're not self-serving, right? Because that'd be more ego. Um, when So obviously you did a lot of, you did different work, right? And you were doing Logan Basic or you're doing, you know, you know, upper cervical and and whatever else the engagement to keep yourself moving to keep yourself going a lot of people burn out after a certain period of years you know maybe 40 years 41 years you know whatever it is you know you went 45 and i'm sure you know you still have your hands on people and da 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 but but the 45 active years of practice consecutive years of practice right you know i never me. missed one day at a home office I never missed one day in practice. Now, there were days I should have missed. I didn't feel like I needed to, but all I had to do was walk downstairs, adjust them, go back upstairs and rest. I've had a few uh, days where, you know, I wasn't feeling all that great, but I never, I always showed up. For some reason, I always got out of bed and went down and took care of people. Yep. So home office, how'd you keep the balance? Like people not, people not knocking on your door at nine o'clock at night. Never happened. I got I got phone calls from time to time, but people never abused it. They knew that if they needed help, they could call on me. And I've had people come on on Sundays. I used to make house calls, hospital calls, funeral parlor calls. <laughs> I've been everywhere and anywhere, but I never felt abused. I had I had two separate entrances. I had I had eighteen hundred square feet of my office and twelve hundred square feet where a by level where I lived, and there were two entrances, and it was never an intrusion. I am so thankful. Because I just calculated, I saved two point one million dollars in rent over forty five years. <laughs> That's my pension fund. There you go. There you go. And it's always nice to calculate it when it's in your favor, isn't it? You know, makes you feel good. You did the you did the right thing, right? That I was my own landlord. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Tell me about it. so 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 you work with Clarence. You said Reggie was a mentor. Was your first you know first one? Give us another mentor. Well, I, I studied with Clay Thompson, Thompson term, Terminal Point uh, Technique. I, I studied, excuse me, with Dr. Dijonet, SOT, yeah. even though yeah, he was man. an osteopath. Yeah. I, I learned every technique under the sun, and I came to the realization it wasn't the technique, it was the technician. Yeah. You know, whether it was a toggle or a, a uh, Logan Basic, if I'm present and that's what the patient needed, the results follow. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get locked into the technique. In chiropractic, sometimes we divide ourselves but based on technique but i would say let, let's come into the presence presence is what the, does the healing in my opinion and the technique is a way of expressing that presence mm-hmm. so so if you were to list your you know four or five you know on the wall mantles in the chiropractic profession right and, and we're not going to bj and d i'm talking about people that you knew you know, since since you were in school, right? Because you graduated, you were a chiropractor in seventy four. That means you started school seventy one ish, something like that. Right. What? Who? Who would they be? Who would be on that on the Ken Harris Wall of Fame? Well, uh, of course, you know, philosophically, it was Reggie, and then after Reggie, it was Doctor Sid Williams. I, I was uh, 
uh, fortunate enough to be exposed to early on in my career. And then for me, the pivotal point was when I met Dr. William Bain, who was an upper cervical practitioner in, in Derry, New Hampshire. He didn't call it a chiropractic practice. He had a chiropractic service where he saw upwards of 3,000 patient visits a week. But he was basically an HIO guy. But his Bill's presence spoke volumes. Uh, Dr. Pasquale Sarasoli, an old timer, he, he was another mentor of mine. Actually, he lent me money to buy my house to get started in practice. So uh, I, I was just blessed with some men who had vision and who were not in chiropractic as a career. It was a way of life, yeah. as it was for me. I didn't wear a chiropractic hat one day and then take it off and be somebody. I was the same on or off. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a cute story. I was uh, um, a buddy of mine purchased a Ted Williams jersey, original Ted Williams jersey, right? And um, and the guy that we purchased it from was over in New England. He was like in New Hampshire somewhere. And uh, when he found out that I was a chiropractor, he said, oh, my God, I got to tell you a story. And he told me a story about, he goes, my chiropractor was Bill Bain. I go, oh, I know Bill. I mean, I, you know, I met Bill, had lunch with him and, you know, that kind of stuff. And he goes, he goes, yeah, well, I got to tell you a different story. He goes, I used to go down to the, to the Red Sox training every year in Florida. I was taking my son down there and Ted Williams, he was retired, happened to be down there. People wanted his autograph and people wanted to talk with him and that, that. he doesn't want to talk with anybody no, like he won't sign an autograph. He was like a cantankerous guy, you know, wasn't very pleasant, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And, um, and so he, he was watching him because he wanted his son to meet him and watching him kind of just shoo people off, yada, yada. And Ted, ba and, and uh, he started walking away. Ted Williams started walking away. And this guy goes, uh, Mr. Mr. Williams, uh, I want you to know we have the same chiropractor because Bill took care of Ted Williams and he turns around, looks at him. He says, yes, Dr. Bill Bain. And Ted Williams walks over to him, puts his arm around his kid and him and says, we got to talk. And they went for a walk around the baseball, you know, around the baseball field. Right. And he was telling stories about how how Bill Bain used to come and adjust the whole Boston Red Sox team and, you know, take care of them. And that Ted Williams would have never played baseball when he left baseball. He went. He went to the war. You know, the, when World uh, World War, whatever World War One, I, I don't know what it was. And and he went and he left and he was a pilot and he got shot out of an airplane and it crashed and he couldn't even walk. And if it wasn't for Bill Bain, he said, I would have never ever played baseball again. I mean, just incredible stories and the the the, the power of those of Bill and those chiropractors back in those days are just just. Just incredible. I wish our students now could understand what they were about. Give me your best Bill Bain story. Oh, God. Well, when I, all right. So when I, met, I was the valedictorian at, at Columbia, and they gave me the, the gift of being the teacher for the first year after graduation. And by the way, I had an instant practice because all the students brought their families to me. I, I had no starvation period. I was the authority. Anyway, I hear this. Reggie had mentioned Bill many times in his lectures when I was a student. And then there was a, a notation on the board, Bill Bain's going to speak today. And I said, oh, I'm curious. Reggie used to talk about this guy. I'm going to go and listen to what he has to say. So I sat in a room with 200 people in, in the back row. And when Bill started to talk, Ron, everybody else in the room disappeared. Yeah. Literally, they had disappeared. It was just him talking to me in that moment. Yeah. And I had, I guess I had a third eye opening. I remembered who I was and why I was here. And then I mentored with him for 10 years. I mean, my on that moment, in that second, my soul was, the trajectory of my soul and my destiny was changed. Yeah. And I'm telling you that I started to cry, literally. And, and people said, looked around, and when they came back into awareness, I said, you okay, Doc? I said, I'm in full joy. Because yeah. he finally, I, I met something I had been looking for my entire life, but didn't know it. But yeah. Bill had that kind of presence. He did. And when his eyes hit my eyes, there was a memory. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I have to pull them out. I have, if I still have them, if, I, if they're still, since I've moved in different places, um, I had like seven VHS tapes of Bill lecturing. And he was so succinct in what he said. And he was so, he would take the chiropractic philosophy and, and be able to show, you know, the human 
the being you've seen this before right you know and the environment and the environment right you know and, and how the being you know would either be attracted to the human right that kind of thing or the environment not the being the human would either be attracted to the being or the environment if it gets attracted to the environment there is a subluxation right environment being addiction this that all the different stuff that separates them i mean just a uh, and the way he would explain it was so exquisite that you just say i want that Right. That, that, that's it and if people don't know the story you know about the how many brothers were there right you know four others and bill yeah, and the yeah five of them were in the clinic at one point exactly and and he you know he went first to palmer you know came back nine or 18 months later whatever the, whatever the studies were and then they sent the second they're working the farm right and they sent the second brother and he came back and i think then after a while they started sending they sent two back you know and they you know and i had heard buses pulling in he had said the buses pulling in to Derry, new hampshire what population 204 maybe i don't know and he had a traffic cop in his driveway exactly he had a traffic exactly. cop in his driveway i don't know if you know this ron but i made a movie of bill's life it's a no. 22 minute movie yeah called bill bain a life of, of uh, a life of inspiration oh yeah, my i'll gosh. send it to you it's available Please. it's on youtube thousands of people have seen it but he says one day two greyhound buses pull into my driveway i had 80 new patients all at once and guess who x-rayed every one of those patients Dr. Ernie Landy. He oh. was in the clinic that day. And I was Ernie's chiropractor. We used to we used to exchange. He lived five five up five miles up the road from me. But Bill, when I showed Ernie the picture, he says, Ken, I was the guy who x-rayed every one of those people. <laughs> and if people don't know er if people don't know Ernie, you know, Ernie was what? You know, he was he was a, a powerhouse of a guy, biggest heart, not real verbose, biggest heart in the world, saw so he 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 took over Reggie's practice, right? That's right. And grew it. He took it over and grew, and grew it. it. Well, you know, Reggie, Reggie, you're on three times a week, you know, and if you missed a visit, you're on five times a week and you get back <laughs> three times a week, you know? that yeah. Reggie was like, you know, we're going to check you out three times a week the rest of your life and someone else's life too kind of deal. I mean, you know, well, Reggie was, I mean, he was so beautiful and, I, and Reggie was another one, you know, just beautiful. I mean, that guy just loved chiropractic and he was so in tune and so exquisite in how we, you know, how we communicated chiropractic. And I mean, these are the, these are the legends and the heroes that, that we have to do. I've got, I'm coming out uh, in probably in the next three months there around here, they're calling it my secret stash and I've got audio tapes and videos of all these people, right? And and we're going to start putting them out so that people can go to one place and be able to grab them. You can go to YouTube and see a bunch of stuff. I know that, but but just to have that, and it'll be, it'll be alphabetized and what they're talking about, and be able to listen to people like Ian Grossom and 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 BJ Palmer and you know and and Reggie and Bill Bain and all these people. Uh, and as we grow it and grow it and grow it, more people can come and just just really take in what you're talking about that nourishment of of life right because that's really what it was you know i'll send you uh the file it's a 22 minute file 21 years after bill's departure by the way i, I was the last one to speak publicly with bill i said goodbye to him he got in the car he went to pennsylvania had a uh, a blowout in his tire went to change the tire episode and had a heart attack and died yeah. on the spot so uh uh, I cried my eyes out. I, I, it was, I was like losing my father, my spiritual father, for me personally. Yeah. And uh, Bill, Bill left his mark. He, he wasn't just visiting planet Earth. He was, a, he was assembling the crew, as I would say. <laughs> you know, because chiropractic really is, well, if, if you know anything about the history of the Palmer family, we were here, we were channeled to the Palmer family to be the, the unification of spiritual and physical man. We had nothing to do with necks and backs and profession. Well, no, we were we were sent, the ones who were called into chiropractic, their mission and our mission and my mission is to wake up mankind to the reality of one. And that's really what we're here, we're here to do. It's not to fix necks and backs and spines. No, it's a unification, a coherence between head and heart and body and expression. So that that was the big idea. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it was empty the jails, you know, empty the hospitals. Bring man back into proper alignment. Dr. Sarasoli, he used to say, when we get straight, Mother Earth's going to straighten out. And I think he's right. Right now, we're out of alignment with the divine design, whatever that is. But human being, the being and the human is not balanced anymore. Right. It's ego. Ego. Ego runs the world right now. Right. And power. And that leads to ego and or power lead, it comes from ego. I mean, you're exactly right. You know, and and when you have that philosophy, when you have that vision, right, of what you just laid out, 
going to practice is like easy. I mean, it's like my work every it's day. It's, you know, it's we could say it's our duty if we wanted to, but because we hold it as that, but it's just like, who will, you know, who would ever, I mean, it's hard to stop. I mean, you, I know you still have your hands on people, but it's hard to stop at some point, you know, you've got to have someone else be able to take the wheel, you know, but, but we'll never stop adjusting, you know, never stop checking, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I want to kind of lead it. We're, we're getting toward the ends, but I want to kind of lead it and talk about legacy because obviously, you know, you're leaving a legacy and, you know, Reggie left a legacy and Bill left a legacy and Sid left a legacy and, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, what do you see your legacy as? Well, I'd like to I like people to remember that when they needed someone to come and help them, I showed up that you could call. On, I was a friend. You could call on Ken. You know, when the going gets tough, give Ken a call. Three in the morning, five in the morning, it didn't matter. I'd, I'd show up and be of service because I had that done for me in my life. So I'm just here to pass, pay it forward, you might say. And uh, like you said, ch ch chiropractic uh, doesn't have an end point. You know, it, there's no beginning and end of, uh, of the chiropractic philosophy. It, it's ad infinitum into the consciousness of, of the quantum field. We're part of it. And, and we, are the, we are the transition crew. Uh, I, that's how I see it. The chiropractic profession was created to be a to be part of the transition crew from the fallen state to the divine state. And we're in the flux right now. You know, we, we, uh, we fell asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I agree. 100%. So I like to be remembered as a, as a reminder, wake up and stay awake. <laughs> you know, the hardest thing I think for people is to stay awake or be awake. You know, just waking up is the big thing. Then staying awake is after that. Right. You know, um, I, I love it, Ken. I just love it. And, and, it's like you know, a marriage, you know, getting the love you, you want, but keeping the love you got. That's right. That's the second book, you know. So yeah. you're right. It, it's not just having a one-time event, but but uh, we default. You know, we default. The pressures of the world come on. And I say the ego's here and the soul's here, and they're having a conversation. So here's what I say. My soul should drive the car, and the ego should be uh, in the passenger seat. You're never not going to have the ego. It's going to talk, but don't let it run the show. That's right. That's right. But, you know, and that's like the educated and innate, right? Same kind of thing. Our educated mind isn't bad. No. You know? no. It's just that it's, it's it's needed in certain places, right? If, I thank God that pilot that was flying me the other night through a major storm, you know, he was using his educated mind to do what he had to do because I certainly wouldn't want to fly innately, you know. But if someone's going to be over me on a table... You know, I want their innate mind. You know, I, I want that spiritual aspect that's going to be delivering that adjustment to be able to make that thing whole. Educated could tell them where and when. And, you know, but, man, that adjustment has to be delivered from that sacred space, you know, and that's well, that. They asked Palmer, they asked BJ, what's the difference? Two chiropractors give the same adjustment. One gets results and the other one doesn't. Extensively, they look the same. He says the innate of the chiropractor connects the innate of the patient. That's right. Therein, therein goes the human. That's it. That's exactly it. Ken, you are a you are a light in the woods, my man. A light in the woods. It's like it's so beautiful to 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 spend this time with you and to to hear you know that not just the, I don't even call it passion because you know passion to me is like you know something that people get passionate about and then they lose their passion. You know, um, you know it's not passion. You you own it. You live it. It's who you are, and it just emanates. You know from within and that's how it's supposed to be so it's just beautiful to hear the emanation if that's the right word i don't know i'm getting like sid williams and making up words right you know vivification uh emanation but that 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 which emanates from you is truly truly pure and it's just a it's just beautiful to see and it is a light so the town you were in was the right place to be because you know if we don't shine a light for others you know to know you know people are going to get lost or they're going to fall or they're going to stumble, you know, and um, and they're not going to continue to go. So thank you for being a light around that. Well, I, I am, I am overjoyed to have this opportunity. And I would just say, when you shine a light, don't shine it in their eyes. You'll blind them, shine it on their path so they can see their next step. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Great thing to end with. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you. And, and to our viewers, thank you. And, you know, I mean, I'm going to have to re-listen to this a few times to get into the gems of what was there. But, you know, just thank you for being who you are, uh, for Dr. Ken to shine the light today, for us 
you know, the historical values that we see and that we hear, they are more true today and more needed today, Ken, true, than ever before, you know, because as the world gets darker, you know, that light light needs to be there. And that's a natural phenomenon. So whether it's dark or, you know, not, you know, it's needed, you know, on some level. But thank you for being with us. Thank you for, for staying with us, sharing this, you know, sharing these uh, life leadership lines with others. We drop these every other week. Um, and the opposite weeks, we drop our Life by Life West. These are now in podcast form. So on the bottom, you'll be able to go to our podcast station, see where that is, or and be able to, to reach out and, and listen in the car, whenever wherever you may be. Um, Dr. Ken left a lot of wisdom with us. And so please, and you'll be, you'll, you know, we'll have it on the bottom on how to reach out to him. Make sure you get his book. The synchronicity book because it, you'll it'll change your lives and when we change our lives you know we need to we need to adjust ourselves below Atlas and above Atlas it'll be an adjustment above Atlas so thank you for being with us Ken again thanks man it's been great to share some time with our audience together you are a gem appreciate you so much and um, everybody else thanks keep hugging those around you and loving those around you and and just make sure that when you deliver that adjustment if you are a chiropractor uh, that's listening to this. Do it from the innate mind once you figure it all out and be that innate to innate connection because you will see deep healings happen on levels that we probably don't even think about. So until we come again at you, uh, Dr. Ken and I will bid you adieu and uh, I'll see you next time on a Life West Leadership Line. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. 